friends. Today, we will start looking at some important language aspects we need to keep in mind when you are preparing a write up in academic context. In the next uh, a few lectures, we will look at uh, other important aspects such as you know. Uh, 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 establishing accuracy, uh, using appropriate vocabulary, uh, then use of uh, punctuation among other things. Today, we will look at use of tenses and then agreement related issues and how we you know uh, solve them. So, to begin with you know tenses as you can see, you know these express whether the actions already took place, past tense, um, you know are currently taking place in the present or will be taking place in the future. So, we make three broad uh, distinctions past, present and future. So, here you need to note one uh, important uh, um, factor. In English, verbs have past tense forms and present tense forms. Say for example, if you take the verb write, so in past tense it becomes wrote and then present it is of course, write. So, what is the future form? In English verbs do not have you know a distinct future tense form. But then does it mean you know there is no future, there are no means of talking about future in English? That is not the case. We use different kinds of structures, for example, simple present, present continuous, use of a modal verb like will among other things to talk about future. So, we will look at these things in detail and we will also look at some common mistakes we do regarding the use of tenses and how we you know um, avoid such mistakes. So, you need to use the most appropriate tense for your purposes. Um, the idea is the tense you know you should be able to convey your ideas logically and effectively. So, some common mistakes here include uh, using a wrong tense or you know switching between uh, tenses inconsistently without a definite purpose. Let us now look at uh, you know major uh, tenses and then we will look at uh, common mistakes. So, simple present you know we use simple present uh, something like for example, uh, the birds fly. So, this is simple tense uh, simple present tense and if the subject is third person singular, we add s e s to the verb. So, it becomes the bird flies. So, this is you know simple present tense um, structure. So, when do we use simple present? You can look at uh, the points listed here. First, we use it for a general principle. Look at the example. Talent shows usually allow people to demonstrate their creative abilities. Here I am talking about talent shows in general, I am making a general comment. So, I have used simple present. Then someone's opinion, uh, Professor uh, Grahamarian thinks that talent shows are important. Here you are using present tense because this opinion is relevant uh, at the moment. So, uh, that is why you are using um, simple present. Then the results of an experiment, the judges scores show that x is the clear winner. So, here again simple present tense. A habitual action in the present, uh, people nearly always feel nervous before they perform on stage. So, here you can see this is in simple present form. This is a habitual action in the present, something you know which is likely to happen very frequently. Uh, 
that kind of a scenario. Then um, a theory, so for example, Bobby Dylan's theory about talent contest is that one should not judge by appearances. So, um, see here. So, here again uh, you, you assume that the theory is relevant. This person may have said something sometime back in the past, but it is still relevant. You consider this is a general principle. So, therefore, you use simple present tense. Then similarly a claim, Bobby Dylan claims that talent shows are the best way for people to become famous. So, this is again you can see here, this is simple present tense form. Then a fact. So, this is you know something which has been clearly established. Um, so, this could be uh, a natural uh, you know uh, fact something related to your environment uh, around you um, or it could be a scientific fact or a historic fact. Uh, so, look at this talent shows are exciting. So, you are using simple present tense form here. Yeah. We also say the earth revolves around the sun. So, revolves. So, that is simple present tense form. So, because it is a fact. Now, coming to simple past. So, simple past tense uh, you know we use the past tense form of the verb. So, we say the birds flew. So, here there is no you know, distinction whether the subject is um, first person or the third person singular. So, that form does not change here. Um, when we use simple past, some contexts are listed here. So, one is what happened so in the past. Uh, for example, there were two acts, Prince Wolfgang won the competition. So, this happened say yesterday, two days back, um, the la last week, so sometime in the past tense. What happened in the past, but is different now? In the past, shows were simpler. So, you are kind of you know um, contrasting uh, how shows were in the past and how they are uh, in the present uh, in such a scenario. Then, ideas that were held in the past, but are no longer held. See, people thought that talent contests were bad. So, this is something an opinion which is no longer general. So, this is the, you can see the contrast here. If an opinion is still relevant um, at the moment of your uh, talking in your particular context, then we use simple present. If it is no longer, then we use simple past. The phrase used to is also used to compare the past with the present. So, usually we use um, used to to refer to a habitual action in the past. Uh, look at this, people used to win smaller prizes. It means uh, this was something very uh, frequent in the past. Uh, also, this is no longer uh, the situation, the situation has changed. So, you can say when I was kid, I used to go to my grandmother's place during summer vacation. So, um, it was a regular habit for you when you were a kid. So, we use uh, this uh, use to uh, to refer to habitual action in the past. Present perfect. So, um, pr present perfect you know is we use when something that has changed over time and is relevant still. So, this is a crucial distinction between simple past and present perfect. So, we use simple past when the event is over in the past. We use present perfect when the event is over in the recent past and it is still relevant at the moment of you know speaking. Look at the example. Recently, talent contests have become bigger and more glamorous. Maybe you know uh, about a um, year back, this is the trend and the trend is still continuing. So, therefore, you are using here present perfect. Then, recent research and its present impact. 
So, uh, look at this, recent research has shown that talent contests can make people nervous. So, here again, say you are talking about uh, the most recent research in this field. This was obviously done in the past, but it is relevant for your discussion now. So, probably you are going to say something based on it, you are going to add to it or you are going to say something you know um, refuting these claims. So, therefore, what has happened in the past is relevant. So, therefore, here we are using present perfect. Past perfect, compared to the uses of uh, present perfect, the uses of past perfect are relatively more straightforward. So, um, past perfect means we have the helping verb had and then the third form of the verb. So, something like the train had left. So, uh, so when do we use it? we use it to describe an action that began in the past and ended before another action in the past. So, there are two or more than two events in the past and there is a chronological sequence among those events. In such a case, in order to clearly establish this chronological sequence, that you know in order to clearly indicate that. So, you have uh, ha there were three events, event 1, event 2, event 3. So, out of this event 1 happened first followed by 2 and then 3. So, you want to clearly establish this chronological sequence. In such a case, we use past perfect for an earlier event and we use simple pa past for a later event. So, look at uh, an example. Before Freud's discovery, psychologists had believed that hysteria was caused by a wandering womb. So, Freud's discovery happened in the past and uh, psychologists believing something about hysteria, this was earlier. So, this was first and this was second. So, that is why we have used past perfect here. Look at second example. Since she had developed her critical thinking skills, Mary performed well on the test. So, her developing critical thinking skills happened first and then her performance on the test happened next. So, use of past perfect here clearly shows that. So, when you are talking about past, so which tenses we use? So, usually you know we use simple past and past continuous, um, you know uh, say in the context of a narrative. Look at an example, when I went to meet my grandparents last summer, an interesting incident happened. One day I was playing with my friends and suddenly we heard a loud noise. So, you can see went here is simple past, happened is simple past, was playing past continuous and heard simple past. So, as I mentioned, if there are um, chronologically connected events, then we use simple past and past perfect. So, look at this, the Mali, the Mali saw us stealing mangoes. So, this is simple past and came running, but by the time the old Mali came, we had already fled from the spot. So, our fleeing from the spot happened first and then uh, you know, Mali coming happened next. So, if you are talking about present, so you have simple present, present continuous, present perfect. Um, as I mentioned, the use of present perfect you know you need to focus a little more on it. So, if you look at various contexts where present perfect has been used, then you understand you know um, how we say that something from the past is still relevant 
and um, so when we use simple past and when we use present perfect. Here um, uh, I need to uh, mention um, present continuous, past continuous, then present perfect continuous and past perfect continuous tenses as well. Uh, so, present uh, continuous tense something like I am talking. So, this is used you know in a context where an event is happening at the moment. So, you want to focus on that aspect something an ongoing action. So, that is present continuous. Past continuous is uh, you know an action which was continuing at a particular moment in the past. Say for example, yesterday between 3 and 4 we were playing cricket. So, it was a continuous you know ongoing action for a 1 hour from 3 to 4 pm. Uh, so, you use past continuous. Present perfect continuous something like it has been raining since 5 in the morning. So, say now the time is um, 1 o'clock in the afternoon and you see still you know it is raining uh, and it started at 5 in the morning. So, you want to now emphasize on um, the duration you know uh, the rain you know it has been going on. So, you, you say that since 5 a m the it has been raining. So, it started in the past sometime in the past it is been um, going on for a long time and it may go on for some more time as well. So, that is where we use present perfect continuous. Past perfect continuous is you know um, an event which was um, continuing for quite some time in the past. So, say last year it had been you know um, raining almost every day. So, you want to hear you know uh, focus on you know how uh, rain you know it used to rain almost every day in the past. So, um, these are the other uh, tenses. So, I mentioned here that you need to uh, look at uh, context to understand uh, where present perfect is used. So, now let us look at an example. This is from a newspaper um, report. Baker said he is not against the program itself, but he is worried about the state budget. Baker noted that his administration has funded other advanced manufacturing programs including a program that UMass Amherst participated in. But lawmakers are currently in the middle of overriding many of Baker's 320 million dollars in vetoes to the fiscal 2018 budget. The house has overridden all 320 million dollars and the senate has overridden 76 million dollars so far. So, now let us look at where present perfect has been used. So, you see it is here has funded then has overridden has overridden yes. So, there are these uh, instances. So, let us look at it. So, Baker noted that his administration has funded other uh, you know manufacturing programs in the past. Um, now, this issue is relevant because now they are uh, uh, talking about something else, funding something else or not funding about it, there is a debate. So, um, that is why this issue, you know this uh, uh, incident has been referred to using present uh, uh, perfect. Similarly, here the house has overridden this much of million so far. So, this happened in the past, but it is still relevant. Same context here. Okay. So, um, in the beginning, I mentioned that in English, verbs do not have a distinct future tense form unlike present and past tense forms. And 
there are various other options available to talk about future. Now, look at these examples. They will live tomorrow. So, here will is used. They live tomorrow. This is simple present. They are leaving tomorrow. This is present continuous. They are going to live tomorrow. This is going to construction. Um, they will be leaving tomorrow. You have used will and also continuous form. They will have left before you arrive tomorrow. So, you have used will and also a perfect form. So, um, many times we usually have a bit of difficulty you know in distinguishing among these. Say for example, when do I use simple present to refer to future say as in this second example. So, they leave tomorrow and when do I use present continuous like they are leaving tomorrow or say when I use uh, this model verb will. Um, if you look at the information here given in parenthesis, you see that uh, there are minute distinctions um, you know um, among these uh, users. So, if you use will, this is uh, rather a sort of prediction. So, uh, the, the if you you know the look at the surety level, the certainty levels, they are not very high. So, uh, this is just a prediction, it may happen, may not happen. In contrast, if you look at this, they leave tomorrow. So, you find you know the, the use of simple present um, uh, regarding schedule of you know uh, uh, VIP, say the PM arrives in uh, Lucknow uh, tomorrow. So, uh, we use simple present. Um, in very formal context as here and this is uh, highly certain, it, it has been planned. Okay. Uh, similarly, they are leaving tomorrow, this you use um, regarding a planned event uh, and it did not be very formal as in the use of simple present. So, if you say they are leaving tomorrow, so they have already packed their luggage tickets are booked. So, they are sure to leave tomorrow. So, certainty levels are high. They are going to leave tomorrow. So, here it is again planned event and there is focus on the intention. So, they, they have made up their mind to leave. So, you are focusing on that aspect when you use going to. Okay. So, uh, say for example, if you say I am going to speak to him uh, about his behavior, so it talks about you know your intention, you have made up your mind. Okay. So, uh, if you say they will be leaving tomorrow, this is less definite, uh, less informal. They will have left before you arrive tomorrow, this you know talks about an event which you expect. Uh, will be complete sometime in the uh, past. Say for example, um, you have a class. So, after finishing all your classes, you are going to reach home by 5, but you have some guest and they have a train to catch at 4. So, then this sentence, you know, look at this sentence. So, the guest will have left um, you know, tomorrow before you reach the house. So, um, this is an event you know, which is going to happen in the um, future. So, we use the future perfect tense if you want to call it like that, you know, like will have plus um, the third form as we saw here. So, will have left. So, describe an action that is presently taking place and will continue taking place until some point in the future. So, I will have revised this thesis 50 times by the end of the semester. So, look at this example. So, um, you have started revising or you are sure you are going to start. So, uh, you are say 
at the beginning of the semester. So, uh, you are sort of kind of you know making a prediction by the end of this semester, I will have revised it at least 50 times. Look at another example, I will have been at the university for 2 years by the time I complete the thesis. So, uh, you know th that much duration is going to take to complete the thesis. So, you say um, I will have been at the university for 2 years by the time I complete the thesis. Um, so, this was a discussion about um, various tense forms and their uses. So, one important thing which we uh, need to uh, look at here is you know what we call stative verbs. So, these verbs they refer to states you know unlike action. So, we make distinction between action and state um, and um, or you know preferences. Um, so, usually uh, uh, you know these verbs are not used um, in their ing forms. So, we do not use them in say present continuous, past continuous uh, forms. Uh, let us look at some examples. So, some verbs are listed here, agree, appear, believe, consist, constitute, doubt, hate, include, involve, know, like, love, mean, need, own, prefer, realize, recognize, resemble, seem, understand, want, weigh, wish. So, this is uh, if you look at these examples, they are not uh, highly appropriate, there is some problem with um, these constructions. Uh, look at this, researchers are not agreeing with the old theory now. So, we have seen here, agree is one of the stative verbs. So, using it in a continuous form is not a good construction. So, here this asterisk symbol indicates that you know, this uh, construction is not acceptable to all people. There is some problem with this construction. Look at the second example, we have been understanding the implications of this theory. So, here again, so if you go back to our list, understand is one of the verbs and so you cannot use it in this continuous uh, tense. So, here it is present perfect continuous. So, you simply say uh, you know people now understand the implications of this theory or people still do not understand the implications of this theory. In the first case you say researchers do not agree with the old theory anymore you do not use ing forms. Of course, in uh, colloquial context, in informal context, you may f come across um, such users, but in writing in formal context, uh, this is uh, usually you know has to be avoided. So, mm, we have looked at tenses. So, now let us look at uh, you know maintaining consistency. So, what does it mean? Within a sentence, verb tenses need to be consistent and they must reflect a logical progression of events or actions. So, this is very important. So, some events have happened, some actions have been taken place. Um, so, what now you are reporting. So, tenses you use should uh, you know um, accurately uh, reflect um, these uh, you know logical connections among these events. Within a paragraph, the sequence of tenses from sentence to sentence has to make sense. So, say in one sentence you use simple present, in the next sentence you switch to simple past. So, that kind of inconsistency does not um, work. 
Now, let us look at an example here. Kalam was a good student and had been always curious to learn more about how things happened. When he was 10 years old, one of his teachers, Siva Subramanya Iyer, takes the students to the seashore and asks them to observe the birds in flight. Then, the teacher gives the children a theoretical explanation, which coupled with the live practical example, cast a deep influence on young Kalam's mind. That very day, the boy realized that his life's calling had something to do with flight. So, you are here, you know, talking about uh, Kalam's uh, biography. Um, there is a problem with the tense usage here. So, look at this. So, Kalam was a good student, you have used simple past and had been always curious to learn more about how things happened. So, this is past perfect. So, that is fine. When he was 10 years old, one of his teachers, Shiva Subramanya Iyer, so when he was, so this is again simple past. So, so far is going well, but now here the author, uh, you know, suddenly shifts to simple present tense. So, then uh, is there a rule that you know you cannot do simple present to talk about past? There is no such thing. You can use simple present, it is uh, also called historical present. Um, so, um, what we are here talking about is consistency. So, you have started with past tense. So, I expect you, you know, as a reader to be consistent. So, this sudden shift here and then see asks them. So, this is again um, simple present gives simple present um, cast this is uh, again simple present. Again uh, towards the end the author has shifted to past tense. So, uh, this kind of inconsistency you know um, does not make your writing an effective one. Of course, the readers get a sense of what you are trying to say, but uh, this is not a good craftsmanship. Let us look at um, some more uh, examples. In these examples, you will see that the uh, problem with uh, tense usage actually leads to um, distortion of um, meaning. So, let us look at these examples. When Smith tried to contact the interviewees for a follow up, some of them moved. So, you have used simple past, again simple past. Now, what is the meaning you get out of this? It implies that the contact attempt caused the moving. So, this is event 1 and this is 2. So, this is the meaning you get now, but actually what you intended was something else. Now, look at uh, this version. When Smith tried to contact the interviewees for a follow up, some of them had moved. So, now this is 1 and this is 2. So, this is actually the sense you wanted to make. So, even before you could contact, they had already moved. So, this sequence you have to clearly establish. Otherwise, the meaning as you saw here can become completely different. Let us look at one more example. Because 80 percent of the women dropped out of the study, the research had been stopped. So, here you know the women dropped out of the study, the research had been stopped. So, this is a past perfect and there is illogical cause effect reversal here. What you actually intend to say? Look at this version, because 80 percent of the women dropped out of the study, the research had to be stopped. 
So, you want to say that because this happened this. So, this is 1 and this is 2, but because you have used this, this actually you know becomes bit of actually difficult to interpret. So, uh, it creates confusion, readers do not make sense out of it. So, a wrong tense use can distort what you actually intend to say. Now, let us look at this paragraph and uh, let us identify problems with tense use and rectify them. For my research project, I first selected robotics, but now I discovered that I have to change it because I realized that I do not have access to the lab. Nevertheless, I am going ahead. I prepared a list of places which I have labs and now I am in the process of contacting them. So, here um, somebody is talking about difficulties faced and the um, current uh, scenario and the future plans, but you can see that those uh, things are not clearly established here. So, what happened in the past, so what is uh, happening at the moment and what is going to happen in the future. So, these uh, links are not clearly um, shown here. Now, let us look at um, this version, this has been rewritten. For my research project, I first selected robotics. So, this something happened in the past fine, but I discovered later that I might have to change it because I discovered later. So, this is again past tense. I realized that I realized I did not have, so all simple past. So, these now clearly show as you know connected events. So, first, second and third. Nevertheless, I have decided to go ahead. Now, you have used a linker, you know, a contrasting linker. So, that is a clue that okay, now you are going to switch to something uh, different. So, you have here talked about the past, now you come to present. So, I have decided to go ahead. So, and this decision is going to stay. So, therefore, you have used uh, present perfect. I have prepared, so here again present perfect, a list of uh, places which have labs. Um, now, I am in the process of contacting them. So, you have already prepared the list, it happened in the past, but it is still relevant because you are going to use that list. So, um, uh, this is how you know correct use makes this paragraph um, easy to understand, otherwise um, readers get completely baffled. Moving on, we now look at what we call conditional verb tenses. So, what it means? So, here you know your actions depend on a particular condition. So, therefore, these are called conditional structures, conditional sentences and uh, they are usually known as 1, type 1, type 2 and type 3. Some examples I have listed here. So, if it rains, the clause will be cancelled. So, this is called type 1. If I were a whale, I would eat tons of food every day. So, this is 2. If I had started a bit early, I would not have missed my train. So, this is type 3. So, what are these? Let us look at each of these in detail. So, in all these, you usually see uh, two parts, two clauses. First one is called condition clause. So, it almost always begins with words like if, most commonly used is if. You can also find words like were, had. Second part is called the result clause. So, this contains um, some modal verbs like could, would or will. type 1. Look at examples. If it rains, I will take an umbrella. So, is it raining now? 
um, not necessary, but, uh, but so that is the question of but. So, if it rains, I will take an umbrella in the, so if it rains, you know, uh, you see in uh, another 5 minutes, it starts raining, then you will take an umbrella. So, um, this can happen in the near future. Look at another example, if I pass the exams, I will get married. So, this is again um, something which can happen in the near future. So, we say this is possible in the near future. So, uh, the first clause has if and simple present. So, you can see here. Second has will or sometimes can. Note here, this is a, a common mistake. Um, people sometimes insert um, will here. So, they say if it will rain, I will take an umbrella, but note that it is wrong. So, it you cannot use will here, it is simply if it rains. So, we use simple present. Type 2. So, look at uh, example, if I were the PM, I would abolish all exams. So, say this is said by a student. So, th is this student the PM? No. So, then uh, has the student you know got the uh, ability and um, authority to abolish exams? No. Um, so, this is you know what you call a hypothetical condition. So, if you know it is a distant possibility, it is not going to become reality anytime soon. So, this is a distant possibility. In contrast, here this is a possibility in the near future type 1. So, if it rains, I will take an umbrella. So, there is a possibility. Um, type 2, you know, is very remote possibility um, and a hypothetical condition. Look at other examples. If they studied well, they could perform well. If I violated the traffic rules, I would risk losing my license. So, um, one important aspect here is, you know, the use of subjunctive forms. So, for example, look at the first one, if I were. So, we usually use um, the form was with I, say like I was um, walking yesterday. So, we use was, but here this is the subjunctive form. So, we use were and if of course, is there. The second clause has would or could and the were form like would abolish, could perform. So, you see examples here. Type 3, so what is this? Look at examples. If I had not studied well, I would not have been working here. If I had applied for the college, I could have got the seat. So, here you are talking about a scenario which you know was possible in the past, but somehow you have let it go, now that is no longer possible. So, depending on something you know which was possible in the past, you say because of that this could also have happened. So, look at this example first. So, if I had applied for the college, I could have got the seat. So, it means here I did not apply for the college and so I did not get seat here and now sometime later I am actually probably regretting. Look at this sentence, if I had not studied well, I would not have been working here. So, it means I am working here and so this means I studied hard. So, um, uh, you talk about something which was possibility in the past. So, imagined or unreal events in the past. So, you use if then um, past perfect form. Uh, in the first clause, second clause has um, would and um, uh, present perfect form. Now, 
let us um, uh, do some uh, exercises. Here are three sentences and uh, let us read these carefully and then uh, supply the uh, correct form of conditional clause. Look at first one. If John had cleared the entrance exam, his father, so look at what is the clue there, John had cleared. So, this is uh, definitely type 3. So, um, if it has passed perfect here, now we need here would and we have be happy. So, it becomes would have been happy. Look at second one, I will get some advice if I the verb you need to use is right, a mail to my doctoral advisor. So, I will get, so this is type 1. So, you use here simple present. So, if I write a mail to my doctoral advisor. Look at 3, if you throw a party without the warden's permission, so throw a party, if this is simple present. So, this is type 1 conditional, you will be in big trouble. Related to tenses, one um, thing which we need to um, pay more attention to is what we call subject verb um, agreement. So, what is it? Let us look at it. So, a sentence usually has you know a verb phrase and there is usually a subject. So, in English there is some sort of you know what we say agreement between the subject and verb. So, if subject is singular, verb also has to be in singular and if subject is plural, then this has to be in plural. In English, the verb phrase you know uh, does not um, agree with gender of the subject, but in some languages that also happens. Um, so, before we look at uh, subject verb agreement, let us look at these sentences and try to identify subject here. The man saw the child. So, here the man is clearly subject. So, this is a, a straightforward example, but um, you do not come across uh, such straightforward cases always. Look at this, the man who walked on the bank saw the child. So, here there is a relative clause and this actually modifies it. So, this whole thing is subject and the main part here is the man. Look at third one, it rains almost every day here during the rainy season. So, this is a curious case in English, actually it here is a dummy subject. So, um, there is actually no um, discernible subject as in these cases. So, as I um, mentioned uh, verbs agree with um, number of the subject. So, singular or plural. Look at example, dogs are canines. A clue was discovered. Each of the female bears was found. So, each was. These people were innocent. So, as you can see, when it is a countable noun, so you have sing, uh, singular noun, 
verb is singular. If you have plural noun, so verb becomes you know, plural. So, clear case. But uh, if it is complicated, something like you know, use of each, every, or collective nouns like people or sometimes uncountable nouns, then uh, you need to pay more attention to um, the tense. And note that uh, this um, you know, uh, agreement uh, you know, is more relevant in case of um, uh, simple present and uh, in past tense in some context. Okay. So, the first case here is subject and verb you know is separated by a group of words. So, these are you know a, a clause, a phrase which usually modifies the subject that kind of thing. So, look at this my child together with several others in the ward. So, which one you use was or were saved by the nurse on duty. So, my child is singular, but what about this? So, um, does the subject here become plural? Um, no. So, this information you know is extra and this is not counted as part of subject. So, subject is only this. So, my child therefore, was. So, the rule is a singular object immediately followed by connectives or other interrupters takes a singular verb. Look at this example, a tall wall of green trees, which one you use was or were. So, you have started with uh, indefinite article a, so you guess it is singular, but then trees, so plural. So, what is it? So, here it is actually a tall wall, so that is what you need to focus on. So, it becomes singular. So, our tall wall of evergreen trees was standing guard over the orchard. Sometimes you have um, infinitive uh, clauses in the subject position. Uh, look at this to treat them as hostages. So, what do you use to treat them as hostages? So, here there is no uh, no name of a person or an object, so which you usually find in the subject position. So, in such cases we use um, singular. So, tr treat them as hostages because you are referring to one action, a singular action. So, therefore, this is singular. Similarly, look at some more examples, our basket of sandwiches. So, you need to focus only on our basket is missing. Several books required for my paper. So, you need to focus on this. Several books are not in the library. The old bus crammed with passengers. So, this is you know extra information. Focus only on this part. The old bus was unable to reach the top of the hill. So, what do you do when you have two singular subjects? Then the question we need to ask is what is the co coordinating conjunction? So, if you have a conjunction like and, the boy and his dog are walking in the park. So, whenever you see the conjunction uh, and, so it becomes plural the couch and chair were upholstered. But there is uh, an exception, you have the conjunction and, but two things refer to a uh, same entity, two labels refer to same entity, then you use singular. For example, my cousin and business partner is retiring next month. So, here there is only one person this person is your cousin and um, also happens to be your business partner. So, we use here singular is. 
as we have noted earlier, if you have connectives like as well as along with in addition to together with, then um, these things do not count as subject. So, now focus only on the main subject, if it is singular, use singular verb, if it is plural, use plural. So, my child as well as their child, so here this is we do not need to worry about it. But look at this, the directors it is plural, so have gone out. when you have sentences with either or neither nor, either Ram or Sita, which one you use? So, note that when you use um, either or neither nor, um, sorry, <coughs> it is usually um, in singular sense. So, either Ram or Sita is going to party neither Ram nor Sita is going to party. Similarly, when um, words like each and every precede the subject, then again it is usually singular. So, every book and magazine was badly water strained. Each of our students was present at the ceremony. So, when you have one singular and one plural, then what do we do? Then you know we apply the rule of proximity, whatever is closest to the verb. So, look at the example here, neither the car nor the trucks. So, we saw earlier we use singular if both are singular, but here car is singular, trucks plural. Um, now, see what is closest to the verb, closest is trucks. So, this becomes were. So, neither the car nor the trucks were stolen. Similarly, look at this example, if either the bomb or cartons. So, cartons is closest to the verb. So, are found report immediately. Neither the company or you which one you say you have a pronoun. So, then um, the same rule applies the proximity. So, with e neither the company nor you are part, you know, precipitating the issue. Either you or he is doing this immediately. So, uh, we have looked at uh, uh, tenses and um, we have looked at you know uh, how, uh, where we use these tenses. We also you know looked at problems of tense inconsistency and um, we have also looked at uh, conditional tenses. We started a discussion about agreement, uh, we have looked at some key important things. We continue our discussion on this agreement in the next class. Thank you.